Out of all of our recent snack or inking videos, this one has been by far the most stressful one to date. With so many snacks under 10 bucks in Epcot, how do you rank the best of the best? We're taking on the challenge today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We are back to the rankings again to figure out which Epcot snack under 10 bucks is the best in the entire park. Do you know how difficult that was for us to narrow down? Really difficult, like extremely difficult. I just spent another probably 30 minutes moving these around on this script, but we did it for you, and I hope you agree with at least some of these. Now, today's snack rankings won't just be based on flavor and quality, but also on how unique these snacks are, how appealing they are to the greatest number of folks, both picky eaters and adventurous eaters, and maybe most importantly, which snacks are gonna give you the greatest bang for your Epcot buck. Let's get to it. We're gonna get into the heat of this list by cooling things down. The American Dream over at the Fife and Drum, the American Pavilion, is a frozen Fanta wild cherry, vanilla ice cream, and frozen Fanta blue raspberry layered slushy, which makes it look like a bomb pop in a cup. Well, until the sun melts it at least, then it starts looking more purple. Anyway, the American Dream is very refreshing and cold, and despite all the sweet sounding ingredients, it's not overwhelmingly sweet. So while it's a good treat for kids, adults might also enjoy stealing a sip or two just for that poolside bomb pop nostalgia. Now, note that the textures are different here. The frozen Fanta along with the ice cream, those are two very different textures. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like your food to touch, this might be a weird pull through the straw. And as far as those flavor profiles go, the cherry and the vanilla are very prevalent, kind of drowning out the blue raspberry, but at least you have a blue tongue to remind you that it was indeed there. The treat is also extremely thick, so don't plan on just sucking it up with a straw. You're gonna need a spoon if you wanna enjoy that vanilla ice cream until everything starts melting together. Now you can grab the American Dream slushy for $6.50. Again, it's over at the Fife and Drum. Rank five out of 10. Now y'all know how much I love the cheeseburger spring rolls over in Magic Kingdom. Well, the thing I don't love as much about them is the fact that you have to pay $9.50 just for two of them. But over at Joy of Tea and Epcot's China Pavilion, I can get two egg rolls for way less. These pork egg rolls come in a crunchy wrapping filled with flavorful and tender seasoned pork and crisp veggies. And you're also gonna find packets of soy sauce and other condiments available to pick up if you wanna add a little extra flavor and salt to them. Granted, these pork egg rolls aren't the most exciting snack in Epcot, especially if you can get pork egg rolls back at your takeout Chinese back home. But two thick egg rolls for under six bucks in a Disney World park is a snack deal the team and I have taken advantage of on several occasions, especially if we need a little protein burst to keep ourselves going. And while you're at Joy of Tea, you might as well try this kiosk's namesake while you're at it. There are a couple of boba tea options available here too for just over seven bucks, making it one of the few places on property to serve this popular beverage. Or you can get a more classic tea like jasmine or oolong instead for around $4. Rank 5.5 out of 10. So I had to add this underrated entry to our best snacks list today because so many of y'all are bypassing this window without realizing it. Oasis Sweets and Sips is the juice bar located in the Spice Road table area of the Morocco Pavilion. And while I'd happily just stop here for one of their frozen mint teas, fruity slushies, or unique cocktails, this window does serve more than just drinks. Oasis also serves authentic Moroccan pastries where you can choose your assortment quality. You can pick up to five or seven pastries if you're having a hard time choosing, but this will push you over the $10 budget. You can still pick up to three and keep things under seven if you're still wanting to try a few different options here. Otherwise, each pastry is gonna cost you a little under three bucks. Yep, under $3, not including tax of course, but that's still a pretty good deal in Disney World. Though not every pastry at Oasis hits it out of the ballpark for us, we tend to gravitate towards options like the pistachio baklava. Rank six out of 10. So Epcot's gonna make sure you stay cool and cultured over at the Gelateria Toscana kiosk in the Italy Pavilion. This little snack stand serves up to 12 different varieties of gelato and sorbet, including gluten-friendly and plant-based flavors too. While these icy treats can be very expensive for the portion size, this is my biggest problem with this particular kiosk and the reason why I don't go here very often is because it is very, very pricey. But the most affordable options you can grab here are the gelati in a cup or the sorbetti in a cup, each priced at $8.50. The gelati option is gonna give you two scoops of Italian ice cream with your choice of chocolate, vanilla, pistachio, cookies and cream, stracciatella, amarina cherry, or one of the exclusive flavors of the month. The sorbetti options are a bit more limited and are gonna give you two scoops of either strawberry or lemon. These ice cream and frozen treat options are great, 
But like I said before, even with them being under $10, you're still paying a pretty steep price for what you end up getting. We got a couple other frozen Epcot treats on today's list that you might enjoy even more than the gelati here, but if you're looking for a refreshing, sweet, authentically Italian dessert in the middle of your World Showcase walk, then this can hook you up with the high quality stuff, all while keeping you immersed in the Italian culture. Rank 6 out of 10. So the maple flavored popcorn in the Canada Pavilion is already pretty affordable, but for some of y'all out there, you can make it even cheaper. The maple flavoring of this popcorn isn't super prominent, but it makes those buttery flavors slightly sweeter, kind of like a kettle corn. Oh, and did I mention that it's popped fresh here too? That gets it some bonus points from us. And here's what makes this popcorn even better. While many unique popcorn flavors around Disney World are not popcorn bucket compatible, the maple popcorn at the Canada Cart is. So if you have a Disney World popcorn bucket that gets you discounted refills throughout your vacation and you're looking to switch things up from your typical salty treat, then the price of your maple popcorn will drop down from $6.50 to $2.25 if you're doing it as a refill. Rank 6.5 out of 10. So maybe you have an international market in your hometown that sells global treats. Great. But if you don't, then you're really going to want to take your time exploring all the different gift shops located around World Showcase. The World Showcase gift shops typically feature authentic snacks and candies based out of that pavilion's respective country. But one of our favorite places to pick up a unique international package snack is over at House of Good Fortune. We call it Hagaf in the China Pavilion. The House of Good Fortune sells eclectic chip flavors that you won't typically find on domestic store shelves. From salty egg and shrimp to Mexican chicken tomato, we've taste tested some really unique chips here. But one of our favorites of of all time that we just so happened to stumble upon was the honey butter option made with real honey. The sweet from the honey combines really well with that saltiness of the chip, but then they've also got that super creamy and rich buttery flavor to them that just ties it all together. If your kiddos are sort of hesitant about trying new international eats, this is a great gateway option to test the waters with since you've still got the familiarity of a chip and they're also Lay's chips usually. So you can see that the bag kind of looks like something you're used to and it's mixed with something a little more outside the box, like a new flavor. And if they don't end up liking it, each bag is just under six bucks, so it won't be a huge L for you, even if your family decides they'd rather stick with their typical sour cream and onion from here on out. I get it. Rank 6.5 out of 10. So Disney World churros may be pretty inferior to Disneyland's churros, but it helps to spruce them up with a little ice cream and caramel. The churro sundae at La Cantina de San Angel in the Mexico Pavilion consists of caramel and vanilla swirl soft serve. That's right, they have caramel soft serve there. Just heads up. And it's doused with caramel sauce, mini churros, and a colorful assortment of sprinkles. You can also add chocolate sauce if your heart desires. The heart wants what the heart wants, and my heart wants more chocolate. Anyway, the caramel and vanilla soft serve is creamy and great for a nice hot Orlando day, while the caramel sauce is extremely gooey and elevates the overall flavor. But as I mentioned before, Disney World's churros aren't always mind-blowingly impressive, which is the main problem we have with this dessert. You can tell that the churros in this sundae are all pre-made instead of being made fresh. They're just heated up from frozen. But that doesn't mean these churros are bad. They're still cinnamony and sugary and a nice addition to the ice cream. Just don't order this one thinking you're going to get some like uber amazing fresh churro-based treat that'll blow all other churro-based treats out of the water. You can pick up this sundae for your fam to pass around for about eight bucks. Rank seven out of ten. Okay, another icy treat coming your way. You can tell we're getting ready for summer in Epcot, right? Kakigori is a Japanese style shave ice covered in sweet flavored syrup, often served with sweet and condensed milk. At the Gabuki Cafe over in the Japan Pavilion, you can choose your Kakigori flavor with options like rainbow, strawberry, melon, cherry, tangerine, or blue raspberry. Kakigori might be a simple concept, but it also manages to be unique and refreshing. It's never bad. The ice usually starts out kind of hard and crunchy, but does melt pretty quickly, so you'll want to eat it fast. Actually, not too fast, don't get brain freeze. Now, depending on your kakigori and whether you want it served with sweet milk topping or not, expect to pay around $6 to $7.50 for this very generously portioned icy treat. Rank 7 out of 10. All right, you're in the France Pavilion, surrounded by art and culture and an impressive, though much smaller replica of the Eiffel Tower. What do you do now to make sure you're as immersed in the culture as possible? You pick up a crepe over at the Crepes à Emporte window. Crepes à Emporte is the quick service component to La Creperie de Paris, but if we're being honest, we probably like the quick service better than the actual sit-down restaurant, but maybe that's a hot take on our end and we'll have to dive into that in another video. So Crepes à Emporte serves savory galettes and 
hard ciders. But if you want to keep things under 10 bucks, then you're going to want to pick up one of their sweet crepes, which range in price between seven and nine dollars, depending on what you choose. Sweet crepe options include a basic butter and sugar, a red berries, one with hazelnut and chocolate spread, and a crepe topped with your choice of vanilla or chocolate ice cream. Again, we really enjoy the crepes here, especially if you're looking for a more substantial, freshly made sweet treat to share. But if you're wanting to enjoy your crepe in a nice air conditioned building and have other dessert crepe options to choose from, then you may still be better off making a reservation at La Creperie for your upcoming Epcot trip. Rank 7.5 out of 10. So what's better than a treat under $10? A treat under $5, that's right. The pretzel bread pudding at Summerfest in the Germany Pavilion is a twist on the classic bread pudding dessert. This thing is amazing. It is super unique. It is super cheap. You're not gonna find it anywhere else and it's delicious. So instead of being made with leftover bread, this pudding is made with what we believe is leftover pretzels topped with caramel butterscotch and a white cream sauce. The caramel is the biggest standout flavor of this dessert. While the white cream sauce is kind of like a creme anglaise and very subtle. Honestly, this treat might have ranked even higher on my list if I had the ability to get a side of extra creme to go along with this pudding, like you can do with the warm cinnamon rolls over at Gaston's Tavern in Magic Kingdom. But beggars can't be choosers here, and for such a dense and hearty treat for under five bucks, there's not a huge need to beg for more than that. Rank 7.5 out of 10. Want to make sure you're always spending your snack money wisely around the Disney World parks? We can help with that thanks to our 2024 Disney Snack Guides. They're available at dfbstore.com. These can help you track down all the best snacks and treats for your family while you're visiting the parks. We eat all the snacks, we review all the snacks, and we do it multiple times. So we make sure that we're giving you the best information for when you're going to Disney World. Just be sure to type in code YouTube to save some money on your total guidebook purchases over there at dfbstore.com. All right, not gonna lie, Regal Eagle Smokehouse hurt my feelings recently when it removed its loaded burnt end fries from the menu, but you can still order a lot of those same loaded fry components off the sides menu, and each of those components will cost you about five bucks each. I'm talking about the seasoned French fries, the beer battered onion rings, and of course the house made oven baked warm macaroni and cheese made with melty white cheddar. Ugh, fine, Regal Eagle, I still love you. Just give me a lifetime supply of your mac and cheese and we'll let bygones be bygones. Rank 7.5 out of 10. I get it. Just because the refreshment port is near the Canada Pavilion doesn't mean its poutine is 100% Canadian authentic. I understand. But you guys know me by now. I love a fried potato. I love cheese. I love cheese on top of fried potatoes. I love a gravy. So of course I'm still gonna love the poutine varieties over at Refreshment Port and you cannot stop me for enjoying them. Depending on when you visit, we'll determine what kind of poutine you can order here. More often than not, you'll find the classic version made with French fries, gravy, and cheese curds. Simple yet effective. But specialty poutines are also showcased here during the different Epcot festivals. Most recently, we saw the plant-based buffalo chicken poutine featured during the Flower and Garden Festival, which technically hit right at the $10 mark, breaking our under $10 rule, but but the traditional stuff is still priced at $7.50, so we're in the clear. Now, let's see if we can fix this problem. Maybe we need a different word for poutine that's not like authentic Canadian poutine, kind of like how you've got like sparkling wine versus champagne. Let me know in the comments what you want to call poutine that's not real poutine, but it's still French fries, gravy, and cheese. Thank you. So we're actually stepping out of the World Showcase for a minute, shocking, I know, to check out the offerings over at Sunshine Seasons Food Court inside the Land Pavilion. Now, Sunshine Seasons has a wide assortment of items to choose from, and that goes for its sweet treats too. Sometimes the bakery case here is amazing, sometimes it's lacking and you never really know what you're gonna find. But if I had to pick just one, nowadays you'd probably catch me ordering the peanut butter whoopie pie. You know how much I love those whoopie pies. I don't hide that. And right now the turtle brownie over there, which I sing the praises of on most of these videos, is a different version. It's not as good as the one they had. They keep taking away my favorite turtle brownie and trying to, you know, put this imposter in there. Well, the imposter is there right now. So don't get that. Get the peanut butter whoopie pie. This costs just over four bucks. It's made out of two moist chocolatey cake-like cookies sandwiching a peanut butter filling, sprinkled with shaved chocolate pieces around the outside, and then all topped off with whipped cream and powdered sugar. Somehow this treat manages to be light and fluffy and extremely decadent at the same time, which I think is thanks to that whipped peanut butter consistency. And don't discount the whipped cream on this treat. It's also super light with hints of vanilla bean. And the shavings on the outside are on the darker side of the chocolate spectrum without being too bitter. The 
The only downside with this treat is you probably want to eat it with a fork since it doesn't hold together all that well. That's not a flaw, but it's just that soft of a treat. So if you're looking for a thick and super rich peanut butter dessert, you might be disappointed. This one's a little bit lighter. Otherwise, it's going to be a standout option that's not just under 10 bucks, it's under five. Rank 8.5 out of 10. Okay, y'all, before we get into the top five Epcot snacks under $10, I just want to say thanks for being here today with a little gift for you. We made a free Best Disney World Snacks Guide for 2024 that gives you our top 10 favorite park snacks, regardless of price, across all four Disney World parks, which also includes detailed snack maps to help you track them all down while you're there. You know I love a snack map. Now to pick up this free gift, go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks right after this. Okay, it is time for the final countdown. We are down to the Norwegian treats at Kringla Bakery Og Cafe. I know, I've done this a lot throughout this video, but I can't help it. I can't just pick one Norwegian treat under $10 at Kringla, so I'm gonna pick a whole lot of them. Kringla Bakery Og Cafe is one of our favorite spots to stop for a quick breakfast pastry either before or after a ride on Frozen Ever After, even though this is a snack location that's technically open all day long. I don't know, there's just something about picking up a morning Norwegian treat to go along with the coffee that you can also order here, and then finding a spot to sip and savor before the showcase gets all packed out with people. It's lovely. But when it comes to Kringla Bakery's baked goods, they tend to range in price between five and seven bucks with options like the school bread. That's one of my favorites. It's a sweet roll filled with custard and dipped in coconut shavings, but it's not too sweet. A lot of you not too sweet people really, really like this one. The apple cake, which is an apple cake with caramel drizzle. The Norwegian Kringla, that's a pretzel based pastry with assorted toppings. And the Lefse, which is a soft flat bread made with cinnamon, sugar, and butter. This one's not my favorite, but a lot of the DFB team love it, so we're putting it in this video. Now, yes, the frozen Viking coffee is also good here. This is an alcoholic beverage, though, that's going to push you over the $10 budget. But you can get the same thing minus the booze when you order the Kristoff Cafe instead. This is a frozen coffee made with coffee chocolate sauce and garnished with coffee chocolate crunch. Coffee on top of coffee on top of more coffee. Now you can order this sweet beverage for just over six bucks. Rank nine out of ten. And once again, I'm gonna be covering a lot of under $10 tasting territory over at Leal Boulangerie Patisserie in the France Pavilion because the bakery case here is just packed with good, sweet, and savory options that won't cost you an arm and a leg or even a pinky toe for that matter. It is very, very affordable, and these are delicious and authentic and freshly made, and I can't say enough about it. Layal is a bakery full of French-inspired eats, both savory and sweet. You can get sandwiches, soup, salad, pastries, macarons, you name it. And the best thing about this place is that there are so many substantial treats here that are not gonna blow your budget. So here are just a few of our Layal go-tos just to give you some inspiration and insight. First up, the Bisque de Omard, which is a lobster bisque in a bread bowl in a whole bread bowl for about seven bucks. I am shocked that this, we probably shouldn't even talk about this because Disney's gonna realize that they are not pricing this high enough. Then we've got the Pan Lard and Fromage, which is a hearty bacon and cheese roll for just over eight bucks. For something a little more sweet, there's the Macaron Raspberry Lime for seven. Oh, and don't forget about the full baguette straight from the oven. It's as long as your arm and it's only $4. Like I said, lots of goodies minus the sacrificing of any limbs or digits on your end. Now, word of warning, if you end up ordering a lot of different treats at Layal because you can't settle on just getting one or two, speaking from personal experience here, the seating inside this little bakery is limited. While there are a couple of seats outside, there still isn't a whole lot to rely on, so you might wind up having to take all your snacks to go. We find that Layal is a little less busy first thing in the morning, but the crowds tend to pick up quickly once the rest of the World Showcase officially opens at 11, and maybe even faster than that, depending on the day. So take the sky liner to Abcot, going through the back, and head over to Layal right at 9 a.m. when she opens. Rank 9.5 out of 10. Now, when Bria and I were making this list, my first thought was where can I fit the Croque Glacé from La Artisan de Glace in here? Because I love this France Pavilion treat the most out of all France Pavilion treats, which is definitely saying something since France is the hotspot of really awesome budget-worthy treats, including a bag at the size of your arm for $4. And this is what we both landed on. The Croque Glacé is worthy enough to be in the top three snacks of this list. The Croque Glacé is made with your choice of ice cream, drizzled with raspberry or chocolate sauce, your choice, and pressed right before your eyes into a warm 
warm brioche bun. The warm pressed bread seals in the frozen ice cream for an enjoyable hot cold snack experience. Truly the best of both worlds over here, and it's engaging tons of senses. While this snack is a little pricier than some of our other snack options, towing the line at $9.50, you can always choose an ice cream macaron instead, which comes in chocolate or a seasonal variety for around seven. But why would you do that? $2.50 extra for a giant brioche bun filled with ice cream? Done and done. Rank 10 out of 10. Now, my all-time favorite thing to do in the Germany Pavilion is to stop by Karamakusha because just about everything here is sublime. Not only does this place smell like heaven on earth, but it also serves up fresh Werther's original caramel desserts all day long, like caramel corn, caramel apples, caramel cupcakes, boozy caramel squares, so much caramel. Now, what are our favorite goodies to pick up here for under $10? Say it with me. First of all, the caramel butter bar. This has been a past favorite for just over four bucks. But the team adores the gingerbread salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwich. Lots of words there for about six bucks. This consists of two giant spiced gingerbread cookies sandwiched together by some of the most delicious caramel and buttercream frosting. Now, this isn't always there. Sometimes they trade this out. Sometimes there is a snickerdoodle buttercream caramel cookie sandwich. Sometimes there's a kind of another chocolate whoopie pie, this time caramel. We just found the brand new carrot cake whoopie pie at Easter time. That had carrot cake and then that was sandwiching that caramel buttercream frosting. But as far as my personal favorite treat here goes, I'm part of the salted caramel cupcake club, which nobody talks about anymore. I know cupcakes are so passe these days, but this is a dark chocolate cake, almost like a brownie and salted caramel buttercream frosting on top. It's just over six bucks. I love it so much. And I don't know if it's just too rich for most people or what, but it's incredible. My mouth is watering just talking about it. Now, in conclusion, there are tons of treats to get here. So don't ignore the tantalizing aromas when you come across them during your trip around the world showcase. And if you see something in that bakery case that I didn't talk about on this video, that's fine. Get that. It's probably great too. <laughs> so definitely, definitely follow your bliss in this bakery case, y'all, and enjoy. Rank 10 out of 10. Okay, we've made it to our honorable mention. This is before the winner, okay? So honorable mention today, of course, are those kids meals. In our past couple snack ranking videos, we've been shouting out theme park kids meals as a worthy under $10 snack entry. So I gotta do that here too, because Epcot's got a lot of kids meals that both kids and adults are gonna love. Here's the thing, grownups. You don't have to order a full adult meal at Disney's Quick Services if you don't want to. It's a-okay for grownups to purchase a kid's meal for themselves for smaller portions at smaller prices. Ordering kids meals means you can save stomach space for a more substantial meal later on in the day or for more snacks around the park. Either or, whatever works for you. So which kids meals are some of the best in Epcot that still keep things under 10 bucks? At Connections Eatery in the World Celebration area, you can get a grilled chicken bow served with your choice of two sides and your choice of small low-fat milk or small bottled water, all for under eight bucks. At Sunshine Seasons, you can either get a cheese or pepperoni pizza roll with a side of pasta salad, applesauce, and your choice of bottled drink for under eight dollars, which is incredible because those pizza rolls are awesome. And at Regal Eagle Smokehouse, you can get that wonderfully cheesy mac and cheese I was talking about earlier with a side of coleslaw and watermelon and bottled drink, all for around seven bucks. Rank 10 out of 10. And our winner, I don't know if this comes across as a huge surprise for anyone, but the under $10 victory today is being handed to the many, many, many snacks and drinks featured across Epcot's seasonal festival food booths. So Epcot's got four festivals that happen throughout the year. Festival of the Arts, which of course we call Farts here at DFB Guide, Flower and Garden Festivals next, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holiday. During each of these, you're gonna see dozens upon dozens of different exclusive food booths pop up around World Showcase. Might be hard to only settle on one or two items festival-wide that you wanna try, cause there's a lot of really unique options out there, from savory to sweet to spicy to plant-based, but the good news is most food booth items usually only put you back around five to seven bucks, giving you the opportunity to munch on quite a few that you wanna try without giving you that dreaded sense of buyer's regret. While food booths change with each passing season, and they may really change once Communicore Hall and Plaza opens on June 10th, bringing the Epcot festivals to the heart of the park, here are a few of our past favorite festival items that have cost us under 10 bucks. The $7 soy glaze sticky ribs at Trowel and Trellis from this year's Flower and Garden Festival. These were previously a food and wine item, but they got eager and greeted us early this year, and we welcomed them with open arms. At the start of 2024, we got to try the $6.75 grilled pork belly at the Craft 
craftsman courtyard during farts? And can we just take a moment to appreciate the raclette cheese that was melted on top of all of this? Because it was a burst of cheesy goodness that we always, always need. Now, at the end of 2023, during Festival of the Holidays, we got to say hello again to a classic favorite festival item, the slow roasted turkey at American Holiday Table, which is just a conglomeration of all sorts of Thanksgiving fixins in one tasty bowl, and it's only $6.25. And how about one more for you from last year's Food and Wine Fest? Because the dark chocolate fondue for $5.75 over at the Alps booth deserves at least a shout out for all its chocolatey goodness and berries, pound cake, and meringue accompaniments. Yum, yum, yum. Rank 10 out of 10. Okay, the video is over, but I am very, very sad because there's still so much to tell you about Epcot, and I was still enjoying eating my way around Epcot with you. So let's keep the fun going. Drop your favorite Epcot snack down in the comments, or let us know which snack you're most looking forward to trying. Don't forget about our free Disney World snack guide with snack maps, available right now over on DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.